A new design for CVX, South Korea's light aircraft carrier program, was revealed by Hyundai Heavy Industries at Maydex 2021. The new design is significantly different from both HHI's own previous design and Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering current design. The new HHI proposal also has a ski jump takeoff ramp over the bow for STOVL operations. The company has also been pitching a bow ramp on its carrier for some years now, but this new model clearly represents a significantly evolved design. The ship features twin islands and two aircraft elevators on either side of the flight deck. The first island will be in charge of overall operations, while the second island will carry out flight control duties. Moreover, the X-shaped design of the new islands provide unique advantages according to the representative. The ship bears a striking resemblance to the Royal Navy's new carriers, built half a world away, but there are some major distinctions between the two ships. The arrival of HMS Queen Elizabeth in South Korea later this year could be considered a marketing opportunity for British companies to wedge their feet in the door of this program. HHI says its carrier design would be 850 feet long, have a 200-foot wide beam, and have a fully loaded displacement of around 45,000 tons. By comparison, the Queen Elizabeth class is 920 feet long, has a beam of 240 feet, and a displacement of 65,000 tons. The Hyundai model is displayed with F-35Bs AH-1Z Cobra attack helicopters, of which a potential transfer to Korea has been approved, plus H-60 series helicopters arranged on deck, as well as what looks like a Leonardo Merlin helicopter, a type not currently used by South Korea. Hyundai says that it will be able to operate up to around 20 F-35Bs. There's also an auxiliary deck area at the very rear of the ship for operating small rotary wing drones, and an adapted well deck from which to deploy unmanned surface vehicles, USVs, and unmanned underwater vehicles, UUVs. The Hyundai carrier design has two elevators, one on each side, including one between the islands, to move aircraft between the flight deck and the hangar. However, the Hyundai design is not the only South Korean carrier proposal on show at Maydex. The South Korean Navy, formerly known as the Republic of Korea Navy, itself displayed a model at Maydex, with much in common with the DSME proposal. Meanwhile, a rival design from Daewoo Shipbuilding and Marine Engineering DSME, is on display that also utilizes a twin island arrangement, but lacks that ski jump, instead having a flight deck that has more in common with US Navy amphibious assault ships. The vessel would be 860 feet long, 150 feet wide, and would have a displacement of around 45,000 tons, according to that company. DSME also says its carrier would be able to embark 16 F-35Bs and 6 medium helicopters simultaneously, with hangar space for 12 of the jet fighters. It has two elevators on the starboard side to move those aircraft between decks. In the course of Maydex, DSME signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Italian shipbuilder Fincantieri, which would provide the Korean firm with technological expertise derived from its own Trieste-class design, a landing helicopter dock with F-35B capability that's now being built for the Italian Navy and which also features twin islands. The DSME vessel is closer in concept to the kinds of evolved amphibious assault ship designs that had been expected, including older LPX-2 concept art. Nevertheless, it still represents a considerably larger and more capable ship than the South Korean Navy's current Dokdo class landing platform helicopter LPH, which is 652 feet long, 101 feet wide, and has a displacement of only 19,500 tons.
In the past, it's been reported that the CVX, whichever design is chosen, will be equipped with an active electronically scanned array, AESA, radar of the same type that will be used in the new KDDX destroyer. It is expected to be protected by Haging, KSAAM, surface-to-air missiles and close-in weapon systems, CIWS. The latter is expected to be an indigenous design developed under the CIWS-2 program. There's also evidence that Seoul is mulling another possible carrier design at the other end of the scale, which would provide the option to move from STOVL operations to short takeoff but arrested recovery, STOBAR, combining an angled deck, ski jump, takeoff ramp, and arrester gear. This is the same configuration currently used by China, India, and Russia on their in-service carriers. This would permit non-STOVL aircraft to be embarked, perhaps including a carrier version of the indigenous KF-21 new generation fighter. For some years now, South Korea has been planning to introduce an aircraft carrier capability to the ROKN and last year the service formally confirmed that it would introduce a vessel capable of embarking fixed-wing jets. Earlier this year, the project received the name CVX. In past there has even been discussion of small or medium carriers equipped for catapult launch, although this equipment seemed to be absent from the proposals at Madex, suggesting that that ROKN has settled on a carrier that is STOVL capable, larger than the Docto class LPH, but not as ambitious as the kinds of catapult-assisted takeoff but arrested recovery, CATOBAR, warships currently on in service with France and the United States, and under development in China. Nevertheless, the Korean CVX proposals are still smaller than the two that China already operates, while Beijing's third carrier is set to be bigger still. With considerable naval development in the last two decades, a true aircraft carrier, as opposed to an aviation-capable amphibious assault ship, would be the next logical step and would be a significant symbol of Seoul's maritime power, helping it keep pace, to some degree, with regional rivals China and Japan. A carrier would also provide the centerpiece of a naval battle group also including destroyers, frigates, and submarines, all of which are produced domestically. However, the utility of a STOVL carrier depends on Seoul's acquisition of F-35Bs in addition to the conventional takeoff and landing F-35As, 40 of which are on order for the Republic of Korea Air Force ROKAF. The Air Force had hoped to secure funds for 20 more F-35As, but it's possible that these could be swapped for F-35Bs or a follow-on order could comprise both variants. So far, however, no order has been placed. The adoption of the F-35B would also provide the opportunity for closer cooperation with the US Marine Corps, which has already deployed its own examples of the jet to the Asia-Pacific region aboard amphibious assault ships and has F-35Bs permanently stationed at Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni in Japan. Potentially, Marine Corps jets could be used to increase the numbers of deployed jets aboard the CVX, in the same way that they have been embedded within the carrier strike group for HMS Queen Elizabeth. Meanwhile, aircraft and units from the ROKAF already frequently exercise with their counterparts from the US Marine Corps and other US services.